Hello ladies and gentlemen, Phoenix or Nix here and welcome to another part of Let's Play Age of Empires uh, Age of Empires 3 uh, The War Chiefs Expansion Pack, Fire and Shadow And we're still on Act 1, Fire And this is Part 3 if I'm not mistaken So let's just jump into this cutscene cut scene. Probably going to screw up now so I'm going to be quiet Well, that certainly took its time uh, there, but uh, as I said before, the mod basically makes the game not respond, which is very odd. And I'm going to move my microphone up. Apologies for any noise there, but uh, yeah, basically the mod kind of makes it not respond, which is irritating. But anyway, Nonaki has been rescued, but her reunion with her son Nathaniel will be a brief one. Ooh, okay, let's see what's going to happen now then. To me, the militia. The Iroquois Confederacy was broken. Some joined the British, while others, like Kanyan K and Nona, helped the colonial. Cause. That's just typical that My I have to. Left his I have to be part of the colonial cause. Desire, that that just irritates me. Legacy. I'm just kind of fed up with a lot of. I mean, I know this is of this maybe slightly historically correct, but uh, it's kind of irritating that you can never play, like, the British is, I, I swear that a lot of Americans, American films, American games, American books, that sort of aim at portraying this era uh, in our time, uh, in, in our past, they always make the British look like the bad guys, you always play the hero Americans, and it's incredibly irritating for me, because I, I get really fed up, which we're not evil people, the Americans were not here. And it not respond. And the Americans were not, like, the heroes. I just kind of hate that cliche. But what's this? This is Breed's Hill. The British will be attacking soon. Oh, no. We need to reinforce Breed's Hill and hold it until to reinforce it. Yeah, we need to reinforce it as the Colonials. Yes. Disgust me. So, let's get some people on some food straight away. Yes. Oh, we have a plantation here, that's nice. And, keep our and men in the we'll have you chopping some wood. So this is cool. So can we build villagers? Yes, we can. That's that's a good thing. So we're going to have... Yes. I've got someone I'll not to... I'll do, I'll do it. it. I'll do it. Ugh. I'm really... I mean, I knew that obviously... I knew when I chose War Chiefs that this game was set during this era when it was between the uh, the British and the Colonials. Uh, but it, like I was saying, it really does annoy me that... With all of these different portrayals of this era in time, you always either play the Americans or you have it from the American side, and it's always portraying the Americans as the heroes, and like they're these great people and they do this incredible feat, and the, the British are evil because they're trying to invade when it's not that at all. I just really hate the Americans always constantly being arrogant and making themselves look like they're gods when they're not in the slightest. It's an incredibly ignorant and arrogant thing to do, and it's very irritating. Especially when at the end of the day, if anything, the Americans were defectors, they were rebels. They went against the British, so really, they're the ones in the wrong, in my opinion, compared to the British. Uh, if you look at history, the, the British weren't in the wrong at all, it was the Americans that rebelled against them, and it was the British that, obviously, I mean, they were all British, but they classed themselves as Americans after they broke away from uh, Britain and such, and Britain had funded all of the, all of the lands and etc., and yet, of course, we're always portrayed as the evil ones, which yeah, it just makes me laugh to endless degrees. Sir, but anyway, we report the British are about three minutes away. Three minutes? We'll need what? to train more what? soldiers what? 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 if we're going to hold off. What, what are you talking about? It says, "Oh, hold off." Oh, I, I thought that said till the British attack up here. So no, basically, the British are almost here. So we're going to get some. We're going to use that one actually, make our troops stronger. Yeah. And you go on for food, and we're going to build a few colonial militia. We can't build many at the moment because we don't have a lot of food or gold, which is eh. But, um, in fact, actually, let's send these guys over to the mine because they'll be able to, uh, mine. They'll be able to get gold quicker if they mine instead of using the plantation. They'll be here any minute. Okay, right. I believe that they're I'm going ready. to come up here first. Okay. I believe that the first target they hit is up here and then they move to the city, if I'm not mistaken. Hopefully I'm not wrong in assuming that. 
because otherwise my village is screwed. And as I said in the last part, the villagers are the lifeblood of uh, the civilization. And ah, oh, see, that, okay, there's the British. So I'm guessing they're going to land here and move up to the hill, perhaps, hopefully. But uh, while we're waiting, I think we have enough gold to build five more. Yeah. Yes. So we'll just have a constant stream of right. colonial militia coming out. Can we build? We can't build a smithy or an arsenal yet. I don't know why I called it smithy. I just did. We don't have enough. Um, we don't have enough at the moment to age up, which is a shame. But that's that's fine. What's this? Hills injured units. Mm, I could go and get that, but I think instead I'm going to spend the money on. Oh, okay. Our villagers have once again run out of meat. I change that. But uh, I think I'll go and spend it on the marketplace upgrades. Now the marketplace basically, all of these upgrades here make your villagers better at gathering natural resources. Nothing, nothing to do with the plantations or the mills because the plantations and the mills are. I mean, I guess you could look at them as sort of like. Uh, unnatural right, because do. you have like the natural resources like mines, yes. deer, or, or animals and trees, and then you sort of have uh, the the constant infinite source of uh, food and gold here, and or coin as the game calls it. I prefer to call it gold. I guess it Across just reminds me of um, Steady men. it reminds me of uh, Final Fantasy. So we're going to get that one next because this one, this card here, basically increases the hit points of our infantry, which we're going to need to do because obviously I'm we're right. quite limited right. on infantry at the moment. I haven't built that many, but we need to get up to age three quickly because we need to build some falconets. Falconets will be very handy. They're very strong against infantries, uh, infantry units, and they do do a lot of damage, especially once they're fully upgraded. And once we do age up, we'll be able to build a smith as well, or an arsenal, and that basically allows us to improve our units in terms of hit point strength. As uh, You can also up upgrade them here, obviously. This increases their damage and hit points. The arsenal gives them a little bit of a boost. So we're going to build another ten of these guys, and then I think what we're going to do is let these villagers gather lots and lots of resources, and we'll devote all of those resources to aging up. But uh, hopefully, how many units they've got? They've only got 10, so we, we should pretty much be okay for the first wave. But I'm sure that they'll, in time, they're going to get stronger. Or they're going to get into larger groups. So now. let's just quickly have our men right. in formation. I'm going now. Get them prepared. And the fight begins! Now, since these are only level one musketeers, they're not going to do much, uh, too much to us. As you can see, we still, we've only just lost one, and uh, Use the guns to take the ships. trying to attack our flanks. Ah, oh, okay, right, yes. So we can. Oh, we have fixed guns. That's pretty cool. So there you go. I think we lost. How many did we lose there? We lost about one, which is fine. We only lost one there. So we have these fixed guns. Uh, you, these are campaign only. You don't get to use these in like the um in skirmish mode which is where you play against the computer and you don't get to use them online although it would be cool if you could capture them it certainly give you uh, the upper hand yes yes but uh, sadly you can't so as you can see now um now that the map is all lit up which uh, in skirmish mode you do not get a map uh, this lit up you don't get like this bigger live feed in the game but we can see all of the different the gun has been natural resources oh oh dear that's not good at all they're attacking our villagers so Let's get these guys out of here, and we have ten more militia, don't we? So we'll send we'll send the ten militia over here to go and capture the gun, and we will get infantry trained quicker because we're not building any, <coughs> not building any cavalry at the moment. But now they're attacking our mill, but that's fine because we're not going to use that mill anyway. If the British take control of it, we've lost. Attack. Okay, well, let's just, let's just get rid of you. Okay, that'll be enough. Right, so hopefully this cannon won't hit my men. I'm very much hoping it doesn't because it's going to do a lot of damage, but we need to capture this. And they're about to capture this one too, which is, oh dear, not, not good at all. Um, British forces have captured the Western gun. Right, we'll send. Run, 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 run. Ah, we lost him. Ouch. That's. Damn. As I said, the villagers are your lifeblood in this game, so that's... It may have only been one, but that's still quite a... Uh, yeah, that's still quite a hit. 
Because villagers cost food. And we're trying to maintain as much... We're trying to reserve as much food as possible. As possible. Right, what should we go for next? I think we'll go for... Don't need that one. We'll go for that since we need gold at the moment. There we go. Okay, so we're going to keep these colonial militia here. Going to keep those ones there. It's 10 each on each cannon. And we'll build another 15 to protect the hill. Because that's very important. So how many did we lose there? I believe we lost about two or three villagers, which is not too much of a blow. But uh, we're going to have to build some more to make up for that. And we're going to get those two. And we'll give the villagers extra health. Now, I usually play... <clears throat> well, one of my favourite civilizations to play is Russia. And the reason for that is uh, Russians have a lot of uh, home improvement cards that can boost their building hit points and their villager hit points. Uh, I think one of the cards that they have basically boosts your villager hit points by 50%. And along with this market upgrade here, which boosts it by 35%, that's almost a full, a full, um, a full 100% increase in health. So their health would be about 300, which is pretty good for uh, considering that these Patriot Militia have only got 230 in their military units, that's pretty good for a villager, which means that they'll be able to withstand quite a lot of damage. And the only problem with villagers is they haven't got very good ranged attack, or well, any attack, really, siege, range, or hand, which uh, sucks. But of course, they're not supposed to be ones for fighting. However, what was brought to uh, a new selection from the town centre that was brought to War Chiefs was the Revolution, which is obviously supposed to um, show the whole revolution between the Ameri uh, the uh, colonials and the British. And, oh, I did not see him there. Um, hmm. That's not good at all. That's we're going to get those next because yes, we're going to need them against the ships. So basically, outposts can attack um, infantry or ground-based units as well as sea units. So I don't mind losing that house. It, Going to, it's going to hurt my population, but we'll just build a few more to make up for that. But I'm not going to bother building any units to stop this cannon here, or this ship. Our colonial militia aren't doing too bad, but it is about time to age up. Luckily we do have enough now, and we could get a privateer actually, that might be Or one caravel. We'll get one caravel and some wood. Yes, which would be quite handy. So what were you guys doing? You guys must have been you guys must have been chopping wood. Okay, so there's our outpost. Now while this ship is busy blowing up one of my houses, I'm going to set up these two outposts either side. And they do have quite a long range actually outposts when it comes to shooting ships and they do a lot of damage, so we shouldn't have to worry too much. As long as this ship focuses on this house, which uh yep, it's still focusing on the house luckily. So while that's shooting the house, we'll be building our outposts. And if we can quickly get this cannon to take out, quickly take out this ship before it manages to drop the troops, which it managed to do anyway, but it's a very small amount of troops, so no worries there. Hopefully this outpost won't take too long. Come on, chop chop. Good. Right, there we go. There's one. And uh, oh, he's not doing a lot of damage, is he, really? How much damage is he doing? Okay, well I've got two on him, so we shouldn't suffer too much now, now that we have those two going. Right, I haven't got a lot of villagers on food for some reason, so... Is there anything else I can build? What's this? Oh, I can build banks! I didn't realise I could build banks, that's interesting. Well, since I can, I'm going to. Banks are... Oh, we can only build one. <laughs> Fine, okay game, at least we can build one. That's still very helpful. Uh, banks are actually a... A building that the Dutch online and in skirmish mode can, are the only ones that can use banks, and they basically produce coins slowly over time because the Dutch have a smaller. The Dutch can have, um, they can only have a certain amount of villagers, so to make up for that, they have banks that produce coin, and it in some ways it's. It's a handy, it's a handy thing having banks, but at the same time, I prefer to have villagers myself. I prefer to have more settlers uh, than have banks. But banks do produce coin quite quickly. You can also get cards as the Dutch that increase the the coin production rate. But uh, I, I much prefer having villagers over banks, just because 
once you lose all of those banks, you sort of lose your coin production. Whereas with villagers, you can move the villagers and you can protect them easier. So I much prefer having villagers. Also, villagers are more versatile. You can build buildings with them and build walls and such. So to me, it makes more sense to have villagers over banks because they're more useful, in my opinion. They have more than one um more than one use. And I'm I think these colonial militia came from the age up, which is good. So we've upgraded the colonial militia. And I'm going to quickly have this guy build us uh, an armory. I was about to say smithy again. <laughs> but uh, we can't we can't get mortars yet, that's a shame. Mortars are very helpful. But uh, we'll just upgrade our outposts here to turn them into frontier outposts, which means they'll do more damage towards ships. Uh, it looks like we're going to need that more damage because we have another ship attacking our frontier outpost here. And we'll have him be repaired, but uh, sadly you cannot repair buildings while they're in battle. So hopefully this outpost is going to win this uh, this little battle here, and then we can upgrade. Uh, we can heal him. Now what's this one? Artillery and combat buildings do more damage to ships. That's a very handy upgrade. So this is the arsenal, as I was saying, and we have lots of different upgrades here. We've got infantry, cavalry, and artillery. Uh, this is for grenadiers. Uh, this one's, what's this one, artillery adds line of sight and they all basically increase the line of sight damage and hit points of any units you build uh, out of all of the different military buildings you can um, use. So what's this do? So, okay, this is a, I don't believe I have, we can build any envoys, can we? Oh yes we can! So I'm not sure if I spoke about this. I believe this was added by the mod, which is fame. And basically, fame you can use to purchase certain tech points. I, I believe that the mod added this, and it's basically to make it easier um, to make it easier in getting tech, or it just adds another element to the game. I don't believe this was from uh, the actual expansion pack itself. And as you can see here, we cannot get this one right now because we don't have enough fame. But it, it's quite handy because fame is generated quite quickly by these envoys. And it's just uh, another way of, it's, it's basically another um, resource that you can produce. And it also can be quite handy if you're low on resources. What's good about fame is when you're trying to focus on aging up, especially on skirmish or on line, uh, I, I believe if this is part of the mod, you can use this mod online as long as the other people have it. Otherwise, it, uh, it doesn't work. I believe I don't believe it works. Otherwise, you have an unfair advantage, of course. What can I do? But um, it basically, when you're focusing, say you're focusing on trying to level up your, uh, trying to level up to the next age, you can't really contribute your resources towards uh, buying units or upgrading them. So that's where fame comes in and can be quite handy because you can use fame to... I'm going to put him here. You can use fame to purchase those units and you can... I believe it's the capital that you can build in age 4 that allows you to purchase those units with the fame. Oh no, it's the fort actually. It's, it's the fort. That's the one thing that I've just went and built and completely forgotten. But um, the fort allows you to basically... Uh, buy units with fame, which I'll show you. And when you're trying to age up uh, during online or offline, it's very handy to use fame instead of obviously using your resources because then you can contribute those resources towards buying more. What is your you can contribute those resources towards late, uh, aging up. So if the fort builds quick enough, although he's not even there yet. Uh, forts are basically these giant buildings that have quite high attack damage. As you can see here, the bombard attack and anti-ship attack is very high compared to, if we move to the outpost here, it's a lot less with these outposts, but with the fort it's very high indeed. And you can also build units out of this, it's like a sort of rolled in package, you have you have the bombard tower, you have like the frontier outposts and then you can also build units from it. Uh, units can hide in it, I believe. I don't know if um, military can units can, Go but now. villagers certainly right. can hide in it. I'm ready. And uh, our militia right. seem to be doing okay Going at the now. cannons, so don't have to worry what about that. Command? And these guys, I'm there ready. are a lot less of these guys than there are over here defending this one, but now that we have the fort, we'll be able to take out the ships yes. quicker, so we shouldn't lose that cannon, hopefully. And you should be hearing some different music. You should be hearing some Final Fantasy music right now, and that's because I've changed some of the data files. 
I, I like the Age of Empires music, it's really nice, but there are literally only six tracks, and General then Ward's that's about it. Soon. So, when you listen to the same track over and over again constantly, yes. it kind of gets a bit tedious after a while, so I decided... Oh, can we not build... we cannot build a capital, so that completely negates that card. Um, let's go eight more musketeers, makes more sense to do that. And, there we go. And we can upgrade this outpost now to fire cannons, or cannonballs. Even though it is currently firing cannonballs, uh, those these outposts do not fire cannonballs towards units on the ground, they only do it towards ships. But uh, now we can actually see this front, uh, we can see this uh, fort in action now. It shouldn't, it should certainly take a lot of damage off, and if I get these two improvements, that will also in, in, increase its damage and its hit points. So look at that. In one hit, it's almost it's completely destroyed it in two hits, and it took no time at all for it to do that. So forts can be very powerful. They are very handy in skirmish mode, uh, because when the computers are shot by it, they usually run away. But it's also very handy online, because the enemy will no doubt try and... Online, you'll usually find that people will try and take out the fort first, because it does a lot of damage. It's a nuisance. But also because... Also because it trains military units and such, and that gives you time, if they do start attacking this, it gives you time to build military units if you don't have any, because you can access this at age 3, you can build a fort at age 3, and they'll usually go and take that out first. I'm not sure why, it, I, I, just because it's a fort, I guess it, it's a bit of a, um, it's a bit daunting when you, you see a fort, especially online when you're trying to play against other players and you're trying to defeat them. It can be quite daunting. So now that we've upgrade, upgraded these guys to fortified outposts, they have a lot more damage, but still nothing compared to the strength of the fort here. As you can see, he can shoot uh, that boat from all the way far away and took out a lot of damage. So this fort is going to be very handy and hopefully should keep keep them away from uh, keep them away from this cannon. And these fortified outposts are doing just as well as you can see. They're taking that one out pretty well. And in fact. I think I'm going to... Do we have any... Oh, we have a Caravelle here. So we, we did get one. I'm going to use him to right, fish, right. actually. I'm going to use him to fish. What's this? Broadside attack. And... Oh, he can build boats. Uh, no. Alright, protect an area. Yes, I'll we'll have him do that. We'll have him protect the area for now. And there's our... There's a... Well, really? Is this it? Okay, these are our reinforcements, apparently. Uh, my... My it's soldiers... Are right. ten times better than that. Why? Why are we waiting for such pitiful reinforcements? Honestly, game, really. <laughs> That's um, pretty game. Just, really, we've held really? off the British. Everyone, fall back. But but I had more. That doesn't make any. Okay, we completed it. But I definitely had more. Um, that just I. Oh, this game. <laughs> Really, I had more units than um. That just makes me laugh. That that always seems to happen. Um, every time I play a computer campaign, on Age of, especially on the Age of Empires campaign, I usually, especially when it's RTS, I build a lot of units. I get lots of resources, and then when it's a mission like that, and you're waiting for reinforcements, the reinforcements look absolutely pitiful compared to your own, and you could probably build a much better army. So it's a little bit um. It's a little bit like, so, uh, not soul crushing, but it's just like I just wasted 18 minutes building up this awesome, this awesome little empire and you send reinforcements that are, my army could take out in seconds. It, it, it just kind of breaks the storyline, but oh well. So you've just earned your 21st card in the Fire Shadow campaign. Your deck is limited to 21, uh, no, to 20 cards, but you're allowed to have multiple decks. If you're having trouble winning a scenario, try a different deck. Okay then, thank you game. So we can't access our cards. Um, I'm not quite sure why, because it just said we accessed our 21st cards. Our 21st card. So I'm not quite sure why it's not letting me touch that, but um, hmm. Why bring up that I can use cards now, but not let me choose any? That That's a bit odd, but oh well. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this part, ladies and gentlemen. Um, a commentary seems, I feel like the commentary was a little bit off during this part, but I hope you all enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next part, and um, we'll find out what happens next, now that we've defended the British for, uh, well, as the beginning cutscene said, Nathaniel decided to join the Colonial, surprise, surprise, American, American game publisher makes you 
makes the single player campaign all about the colonials and makes the British look evil, isn't that typical? But um, Or makes the British the enemy, because when doesn't that happen in the American game based during the American Revolution? But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this part. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you all again in the next part, where we're, uh, I guess we'll find out what the colonials' plans are to do next. So until then, goodbye, take care, and thank you for watching once more. Goodbye for now.